I'll get you, my pretty, and your little dog, too. Oh, <laughs> hello. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So, <clears throat> if you've been waiting for the Harvest Halloween flip-flop journal set that I premiered or showed you a couple of weeks ago, um, then, ta-da, it's now ready. I do apologise for the wait, but life got in the way as it sometimes does. So let me turn over to my overhead camera and I will show you the new set, the 20 page set. Mm, I know. Um, and then we'll get started and we'll actually construct one today. So let's get cracking. Okay, so this is the set. So I've already taken the kind of like the liberty of, of got getting started on the set and um, but i've just thought i would quickly kind of flip through it with you and just show you what's included in the kit and what i've done before sitting down to talk to you peeps um right so i've printed off the full set including the signatures but i've obviously printed the signatures multiple times for the flip-flop journal and I've already cut those out. These have been printed on ordinary printer paper, not thick cardstock, and they are double-sided. So I've printed both sides and then cut them down to the size of the flip-flop journal, um, which I'll come to in a moment if this is the first time that you've ever heard of a flip-flop journal. Um, so these are all the, the panels and the cards and the inserts. There's more here than you actually need. I just thought I'd throw in extra bits and pieces into the kit just so that you could have enough to play about with and make different versions of the same journal if you really wanted to. Um, so panel wise for your um, for your 12 panels you've got 12 different individual cover panels. I know you all love that cat with the um with the pumpkins, with the pumplykins, and the scary scarecrows. But it wouldn't be a scarecrow if it wasn't scary, it would be, it'd just be a crow man. Mm. Anyway, moving on. So, yeah, lovely kind of cutie witch, obviously with that same um, spidery web, cobwebby background that I designed. So those are your 12, <laughs> your 12 panels for the flip-flop journal. So before I go any further then, the four panel, the flip-flop panels, I've buried them underneath here. Okay, so you have two strips that we've cut out of a 12 by 12. So if you imagine a 12 by 12, that's literally just being cut down the middle and then folded at, at four inches in a zigzag, in a Z shape, or as we say here in the UK, a Z shape. I think actually they say Z in Canada as well, don't they? Yeah, I think so. Anyway, so you need two of those, and that just is cut out of a bog standard sheet of 12 by 12 cardstock. Obviously I've gone for black, and I'm spitting, I do apologize. Um, I've gone for black, but you could go for orange, or you could go for green, it's harvest after all you could do whatever you wanted to so harvest colors that's what i've done so those panels when cut out will fit onto this section here so that's why there's 12 because there's three sides there or three panels there and three panels there we will be joining these together to create one big continuous um what do you call it concertina concertina so that's what it'll look like when it's done when it's joined together so those are the 12 panels for that there's also four journaling panels if you wanted to substitute four of those panels for four of the actually there's eight isn't there have i done that twice or have i done it multiple times for some reason i've done it multiple times can't think why you only really need one if you like um but you can do that um, and substitute four of those for those decorative panels if you want so that's another option for you there's also um there are five 
Um, signature covers, which I've also printed on the back because you will see both sides of this. Plus that folds up into a pocket for the inside, if that makes sense. And there are five of those, all different. There's also a mini postcard tag, which I've left blank because you can either um, stick it together and use it as a postcard from the inside for or journal on it or whatever you want to do on that. That's entirely your choice. And then there are four journaling tags, which again, you can cut out, fold, stick together, and then journal on both sides. So they'll be perfect for pocket fodder. As far as the signatures are concerned, like I said, I've printed them both sides and I've cut them out at the appropriate size to fit inside the journal. So I've just made it slightly smaller so it fits within. And then obviously it's gonna be folded over to create your signature. So they're going to be grouped into groups of four with those signature covers with the pocket. Okay, so I'm hoping that makes sense. I certainly hope so. So my task now is to go away and to cut all this stuff out and then I'll be back. But probably I'll be back after lunch because this is gonna take me a while. So I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, so it's about, about an hour or so um, has passed since I last saw you. <laughs> and I did have lunch. So I've cut everything out. I've folded the signatures up. I've even gone around um, all the edges with some distressing just to kind of get it all grungy dirty. Um, so what I'm going to do first of all, just pop these things. I've not done everything. Obviously, there's some bits and pieces that I wanted to show you, um, like doing the the tags, that kind of thing. Um, not stitched in the journals or attached the journals yet. Haven't fastened or glued down the pockets, although they are folded and done. But I haven't glued those down. So there's still a few bits and pieces that I need to go through with you. But what I wanted to do, just clearing some space, is just make the base up first of all. So like I showed you earlier, so it is literally just a sheet of 12 by 12 paper, which has been cut down the middle. Literally, that's all it is. It's just cut at six inches and then folded at the four inch mark, but in a zigzag pattern. So to create the base, you want to create I'll just say a W. It's not really a W, but that's the kind of shape that you want. You want two at that side and three openings at this side. So you've got five in total. One, two, three, four, five. So what I've done is I've cut just a thin two inch slither of a uh, black cardstock, the same sort of stuff, um, two inch by six inches. And I'm going to create a hinge in which to attach those pieces too so that where it's going to be joining to create what it's like a bat um yeah so that's what i'm going to do so i'm going to grab some glue glue here we go trusty spirit glue here we go right so do one side first This should grab pretty quickly. Gives you a little bit of wiggle room, but it should grab fairly quick. So one side first. So we'll do this one. And I'm just going to push it into the center. There we go. Don't worry about the join because you will be covering that up later. 
with one of the panels so you won't even really see it. So that's that one done. And if you want, you just wipe a glue away if it offends you. And a little bit of glue on the other side. And then just to make sure that we're going to get it the right way. So we need to make sure, yeah, that's the right join. Flatten it out and then we can stick the next piece down. Um, not going right up. I want to leave a little bit so that there's room for it to be folded. There we go. So that should be now our three and a two. One, two, three, four, five. And like I said, that's going to be covered up anyway. So you're not really going to see, you'll only see a little bit at the top and bottom. So we can now start to glue all our panels on. So these were all of these. So you've got. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there's 12 panels and there are 12 of those in the kit. So you can decide which order and which one you want on the front. I think I'm going to put tab eight on the front. So and I've left a little bit of a border all the way around just so that there's a bit of room. So these are slightly smaller than what you cut out of your 12 by 12 paper. So the next process is going to be just literally deciding which one you want to go where. So that's going to be my front cover. What you could do if you wanted to is you could actually open it up completely and then just stick them all down on one side and then flip it over and then stick the others. But I kind of like working like a proper book. So I can then decide, right, we've got the cat on that one. So let's have that one in next. I think it's going to work rather nicely. So what I'll do is I will go through because the next bit of process is just going to be a question of me deciding what's going to go where, which one's going to go down. So it's not going to be very interesting for you. And then actually, once I've decided which one, I'm just going to glue it in. So like I said, it's not going to be all that interesting for you. So what I'll do is I will carry on choosing which is going where. And then I'll join with you again once I've done all 12. All right, so I've just stuck the last panel onto that set. So now we've got one on each side. And now we've got our continuous flip-flop journal panels, all done <laughs> and ready to go. So while the glue finishes um, just setting, I'll put that to one side and then we'll bring in one of those little pockets. So these were designed with a little pocket on the inside. This is the covers for the signatures. So the signatures, this set of signatures will sit inside here once these are done. So I've already gone through and creased and folded everything. I've got some little red liner tape here. Um, 
because of the glue, I don't want to glue these bits because some of it might squidge out and go onto there and then close your pocket up and you don't want that. Well, I don't want that anyway. So I'm going to grab some red liner tape, construction tape, red liner tape, same thing, same difference. Stick some there. Just cut that with my knife. And along there. The blade on my scalpel is a little bit blunt at the moment because after all that cutting out of the um all the ephemera. So it's just a double layer. I've had a look, I can't find any wider construction tape. So it must have used all the big wide stuff. That'll do. Okay. So I can always tidy that up before I stick it down with a pair of scissors. There we go. Let's get rid of that. Okay. Lift that off. Sometimes the red liner tape can be really fiddly and some days it just comes right off. When I used to do demonstrations on the TV, not that I'm name dropping or anything, um, we used to not <laughs> use this kind of red liner tape because sometimes it would take ages and if you've not found the end, it's like dead airspace. So we tried not to in the end, ever use it. That was like a telly tip. Don't use red liner tape. <laughs> Unless you'd already peeled the corner off before in your demo. <laughs> so if they're quite, not quite lined up, that's okay. You can just go back in and recommit the creases. Okay, so then we've got our little pocket. So where's the postcard? That was the postcard. So what I'll do is just quickly add some glue to actually, do you know what? Let's just add a secret pocket in that postcard. Just came to me just then. Why don't we add a secret postcard? Rather than gluing it down, sticking it down, Have a little bit of fun. I've already gone round and distressed the edges. This is why you don't use red liner tape on TV. Right. Bump, 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 because sometimes it takes ages. All right, let's close that up. So now we've got a little postcard like that, but we've also got a little secret pocket, and that should just sit inside. There we go. Just like that. There we go, so that's a signature cover with a pocket, all nice and snug. So I'll team that up with some of the signatures, put that to one side and then I'll go away and I'll start doing the rest. So I will join with you back in a little while. Right, so we've done all five of the pockets for the signatures. They're all lovely. Well, pockets for the signatures, the covers for the signatures anyway. Um, but you might be wondering what those panels were for. Now, I don't know whether the camera can pick that up or whether it's too bright, 
but there are lines on that writing paper. Um, so what you can do with those, if you want, is just add some glue onto them. I did say you could use as many of these as you wanted to. You don't have to even use them at all if you don't want to. But you can then just drop a journaling square onto that side of the, the cover. I've got a little bit of white showing there. So I'll just cover that over with the ever faithful distressing covers a multitude of sins and things that you've forgotten. So you can add some of those tea pockets as well. So I'm not going to add one to every one. I'll probably do it to um, maybe three of the actual signature covers, if you like. So I'll do that now before I forget. So let's grab one of the other ones. I love that big spider's web. And then we've got a little jack-o'-lantern with a witch's hat. Just sit that on the inside. There we go. So that's two, and let's do this one. We'll have the little skull with the pumpkin on that one. Yeah, I'll just do three. And you could do all five if you wanted to. Or none. <laughs> or none at all. There we go. So those are three of the covers. So that's now all five of the signature covers done. So we've got three with and three without. One, two, three. Yes. Yeah. So let's space those there and there, 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 and there. Excellent. Okay. On to the next bit. Onto the little journaling tags. So these were the back to bag ones. All I've done is just cut them out square. I've not shaped the tops just yet and just scored them down the middle, just ready for some glue. These are probably going to be the easiest ones to do. Just add a little bit of glue, fold it over. Don't worry too much about getting them perfectly lined up because you've got plenty of scope to alter and to change them later. So I'm only putting a little bit of glue in there. I'm not going mad with it. Okay, so I'll just finish this last one off. Give it a few minutes just for the glue to set and bind, and then I'll be right back. It's been a few minutes, so all I'm gonna do with these tags is just grab a pair of scissors and then just follow the shape that's already printed on. And you should pretty much get the shape. Don't worry too much if you've got a little bit of a slither, that's what the Distress Ink was invented for. So just whip off those corners. There we go. If you cut the corners off first, before folding them over, you might find that you've not necessarily got it bang on. And it's a lot 
easier to trim and change once you've folded the tag over than it is beforehand. That's just in my experience. Okay, so you can just grunge up. Grunge to taste, as they say. All right, I'll just go around sorting this out with the distress and then I'll be back and then we'll use the crocodile and put some eyelets in these just as a last kind of finishing touch. All right, so I've got the crocodile. I've already punched the holes out of those few because, you know, we've all seen holes being punched into bits of cardboard before. <laughs> There we go. And then I've got my eyelets. I'm going to decide which way I want to be the front. That's going to be the front. Pop the eyelet in. And then just give it a squidge. There we go. One lovely gold eyelet. So I shall do the other three. And then I'll be back. So all of the tags have now got the eyelets in. I've cut some black satin ribbon. I've not been particularly um, careful about cutting it straight because, you know, this is a Halloween sort of journal anyway, so it doesn't matter if it's raggy. And you can use, you don't have to use ribbon. You could use Becker's twine. You could use hemp rope. You could use mummy cloth if you've got some of that Tim Holtz mummy cloth. Um, you could use seam binding, whatever you like. Baker's twine, have I said Baker's twine? So just feed that through. Create a loop. Push the tails in. I think I've had this black ribbon in my stash for more years <laughs> than I care to admit. Okay, so I'll finish doing these and then we'll get ready for the final bit. So the tags are done. They're ready to be popped and populated into the journal when it's complete, along with that fabulous postcard. So if you remember, if you follow my channel regularly, you'll remember this flip-flop journal that I did as part of my Spook Timber series this year. Um, and I stitched the signatures in using just a bog standard three hole pamphlet stitch. And I used purple on one side and then on the other I used orange just because um, and that was just like the bog standard three hole pamphlet stitch with the signatures in and again there was the signature covers for those but I thought for this one I would try doing something a bit different if you don't want to stitch then there is another alternative. We can staple. Just because it's small enough, we can just do one staple for each one. So that's what we're going to do for this, this next one. So let me just get ready and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got a piece of foam that I'm going to be using as a pricking mat and I've got a stapler. So I've also got a couple of little clips which are just going to help hold things into position. So decide which one of your covers you want to go into which section. Centre it up. Now using one of the, the clips, you might just want to hold the rest together. Um, Centering and holding that down. And then I'm just going to clip the other one 
once I've got it into the position that I want it at and then clip the bottom clip the top and then I'm going to open it back up again onto the pricking mat and then I've opened the stapler up and then just lining up on the crease and put one in there And one in there. Lift it, flip it and then using either a bone folder or a ruler you can just close your staples that's if you don't want to stitch if you prefer not to or you don't like stitching but you still want to create a similar sort of journal then that's how you can do it and that is the first signature you may just have to recommiss or just squeeze there we go so that's that one done. So your next one needs to go in there. So have a look at which of your signature covers you want to add in. Let's have that one in with the cross. Turn it round. Pop it into position. Because we've already done that one, we can just clip that together. Actually, no, we don't need to, we don't want to clip that together. We need to separate that. That's it. Pop it into position. Clip that one. Clip that in place. So we know that's going to be in the right position. Flip it. Move that out of the way now. Get your stapler. Pop a couple in. Turn it over. And like I said, using your bone folder or a ruler. I'm only using a ruler because I can't find my bone folder. I'll just use your nails. Squeeze and push, and then you can commit with your bone folder later. There we go. And hopefully you've remembered to get it the right way up. There we go. And then just do the same thing again to the last one. So we've got there, so let's have the Scarecrow, the Crow Man. just seeing whether or not we had which way around we've got the um the ones with the journal piece in all right so we'll do the same thing again onto the last piece all down and like i said it doesn't matter too much if you don't get it perfectly straight like i said it's a halloween journal you can be forgiven a bit of wonkiness. If you can't be forgiven for wonkiness at this time of year, when can you, eh? Answer me that. One, two. Just 
squash that down. Okay, so I'll carry on doing the last two and I'll join with you again at the end. It's getting kind of thick. <laughs> All of the five signature sets are now stuck in. So all we have to do is just populate and add in those little tags. So on the inside front pocket, that's got the postcard in. So let's just take that out and we'll put that in somewhere else. And we'll add one of those little tags. So in the middle one, we'll put the postcard and then in the end one we'll stick a tag and then we get to the back of the journal we turn it over and then open that signature set again tag in there and because there's only two signatures at this side we can stick a tag in there And then close again. So just to run through the whole of that Harvest Halloween flip-flop journal. So there's the front cover. So we're opening. There's our signature cover. We open up, there's the tag. There's the signatures. That's the back inside cover. There's the next panel, we open up to the next set. That's where the postcard is, there's the signatures. And then we've got a journaling panel. Close the signature set, another panel, open up the next one. Next signature set, another tag, there's the signatures. There's the back of that signature set. Next panel, closed. Open again, and then we've got Another signature set, again with a little tag, all the signatures on the back end with a journaling panel, close that, open up the next set, another one, another tag, more signatures, another journaling spot, close it, close the journal, that pocket's just come. just pop it back in, there we go. Anyway, you get the picture. So you could go on and 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 on forever. Get to the back, flip it, carry on. <laughs> more space, more space, more places. And don't forget you could use those um, journaling sheets as well if you wanted to. You could stick those into the signatures to turn them into little writing spots if that's what you want to do. Or you could just add the signatures in without the journal covers. Just add as many signatures as you can cram in there if you want to. So there you go. That is the Harvest Halloween flip-flop journal. So I hope you've enjoyed watching me create this and also the fact that I've shown you a second way now in which you can bind your little flip-flop journal if you want to so you don't have to sew so there's a sew option and a no sew option if you haven't seen the first one that i did i will put a link to it i'll try and either do one of those kind of eye cardy things up in the corner here or i'll put a link to it in the doobly do below the video here so if you haven't seen how i put that one together with the stitching then you can watch that one as well if you fancy it. So those are my two little flip-flop journals. Like I said, I hope you've enjoyed watching me create this one today. If you have, please remember to give the video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, 
you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. And don't forget, if you want to purchase the Harvest Halloween Digi Download set with all those signatures, the journaling cards, the tags, the postcard, and all that stuff in there, it's now available on my website. And again, there'll be a link in the description below. That's all from me for now. I'll see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you these videos would not be possible. And don't forget you can access your exclusive angel only content over on my website. There's a link in the description area below. Thank you.